Were they threatening arrest over that? You never had a pilot the whole time! Put my seat back! I'm allowed to put my seat back! Like, I'm not in a conspiracy theorist by any means, but there's some real weird shit going on. Welcome back, everybody. Dynamite intro, Mrs. Lush. Damn. Welcome back, everyone, sweetheart. We've watched plenty of people freak out on this channel, but what's the worst place to freak out? I'll answer for you. Airplanes! People love freaking out on airplanes. We've said before, it might be a combination of the fact that some people are afraid to fly. Oftentimes people get boozed up at the airport. Kind of like this perfect storm for people to just act irrational and up everyone's day. Ma'am, you're 30 seconds from getting off the plane. I am not, no, 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 I don't want to hear it. This woman was on standby for the flight. When she boarded the plane, she claimed a window seat and started an argument with a man sitting next to her. It's not even about that. I was sitting before she came in. Oh, okay, okay. Let's, let's come down. I need to get this flight out. Okay, so we need to get our stuff together here. What's this to be the problem? So you tell me first. She is the problem. I was sitting out right here. I came out and had my charger put in right here. She came on for my charger. And then look, look at it. Okay. Why did he say she did problem? I asked him to get up because he wanted me to call the cops to get in my seat. So I asked him if they'd get up, but I didn't feel Thank comfortable you. crawling across their legs. So they got up. She's wanting to switch seats for me. I, mean, I have no problem with that arrangement. Yeah, let's get going. Okay. Yeah, let's get going. I mean, Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. 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 Holy moly. So, two that things. That was a good outcome. You, better than you usually see. Yeah. These things. Two things. You did, you can't just take somebody else's seat. You if there's, like, that. clearly a bag and a charger there. I said she was on standby, whatever that means, so maybe there was extra seats around. Yeah, you have that to means take, you take an open yeah, seat. Yeah, you take what's available. And especially if you do, and then they're like, hey, I was sitting there, you're like, oh, my bad. Instead of just being a... A bit about See it. See you yeah. next week. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Put that on that woman. So now, yeah, it could have just been such an easy thing to not have a problem, and now it's just going to be the most awkward flight for everybody. Oh, I've seen this. A man goes off on staff that aboard a Southwest flight with a because profanity laced this tirade right because of a crying baby. I'm Anjanette Levy, and thanks for joining us here on Law and Crime. A Wisconsin man recorded that video on Monday. He was on a flight when the baby started to cry. Why is the baby down? I'm not screaming. I'm not screaming. Please stop the baby. Please. This guy, so, I'll tell you in a second. <laughs> this child was a black baby, it wouldn't be happening. <laughs> what are you doing? What? what is there, uh, the obsession with making it about race for some people every time? Uh, in it, uh, get into that but it's so embarrassing it's so embarrassing his tantrum is bigger than the he goes look at the look at the look at this he goes like this and you want to talk to me he goes you're yelling and he goes so is the baby so is the baby sir the baby's one year old you're a grown-ass man nah i don't know how any i don't know if there's any other else to say So now we're all getting deplaned. They get deplaned well, because of it. That's probably not how that his ass. wife imagined their Florida getaway going. They all get deplaned. It's not it. exactly clear what happened to the man after he got off the plane, but there's not enough negative words I could say about this dude. No. You want to know the? You want to know the? F part though the sad the saddest part to me is this was a video in a brain worms video i made on my main channel it is a while ago yeah it's been around for a little while this clip and this it always works on this channel because you never have seen anything so it's perfect i roasted this dude because like literally it's a baby on a plane like i promise you that the parents were probably oh, come as, on. That's what I was gonna say. Yeah, were as mortified as the baby because they don't want you know no parent wants their kids to be the reason no. it's freaking out. like half of the comments were be like oh yeah i get it that dude's not even wrong like, shut up yeah they were like empathizing with the dude no. acting like that because of a baby crying i couldn't f believe it it's one thing to feel annoyed or disturbed or whatever you feel but it created you this have to have the maturity 
right. Then no, not you're not gonna act out on it and have a tantrum. Yeah, but it created this whole discord in the comments from people being like, yeah, but I've seen parents that like don't pay attention to their kids and all these it's things. I'm like, that. dude, we don't have the context here. Certainly there are annoying parents and parents that can do better with managing their kids on the plane. Separate issue. Issue here is this grown ass man having a toddler sized temper tantrum over a baby. Yeah. Getting the plane deplane. Regardless of how you feel about children on planes, you shouldn't feel any type of way. Children have to be on planes. It's they part of to life. Travel. Yeah, they need to travel. Even on this video, we're gonna get comments like, well, Leah, don't forget. No, shut the f up. I don't wanna hear it. If you have any empathy for this dude, you're f brain dead. I'm sorry. Yeah, <laughs> this yeah. is all there is to it. I don't like sitting next to a crying baby either. Noise canceling headphones. You're gonna be off the plane soon, anyways. Grow a f pair of being a doubt. And if you're not gonna buy and she's gonna have to do it, then they can and they can remove me off the plane. Yeah, that's fine. You and your wife will be in jail and your kids will be in jail. Oh, okay. Yeah. So my kid, wait, so my wife, we're going to be in jail and my kids are going to be what? That's so intense. You don't, bye bye. I bought that seat. I understand it's for me, right? Right. Right, I I paid, I got him a ticket on another flight so that my son would have a seat. And you're saying, and you're saying you're just going to, you're going to give that away to someone else that when I paid for that seat, that's not right. I understand, but you'll put that. Mason's not here, so the seat I have to understand the context here. I know. Give us something. That is not right. He paid for the seat and everybody can give it up. I, yeah. How do you pay for a seat and then they're making you give up your seat? I don't understand that. You need to, no, you need to do what's right. Yeah. I bought the seat and you need to just leave us alone. Yeah. So Mason's not here, so Mason cannot be the one that owns the seat. I, no, I paid for the seat. I bought the seat. All right. It sounds like he bought tickets maybe for him and his wife. So the tickets in his wife's name, his wife's not there. He's with his kid and his kid sitting in his wife's seat. So it's the fact that oh, his kids, how the, hell did you pick that up? Jeez. the flight attendant just said, sir, Lisa's is not here. And he's saying, I paid for the seat. Okay, got it, got it. So he paid for the seats, but okay. his kid's name's not on the ticket. Oh crap. That's still f though. That's, no that shouldn't matter at all. If you pay for the seats, if you pay for the seats, they should not be able to hundred I don't care if the name's on or not. You paid for that seat to be occupied. Yep. So whether it's Beavis, Butthead, or your grandfather or your son, like it shouldn't fucking matter, in my opinion. You can you can look and see. Doesn't he's he's my it's my son. It's, are you guys frustrated? Hi. I'm yeah. sorry. Um I already know the situation. I've heard you guys said I know man. Other than the what's going on? Is there anything else I can do? I know you guys are pressured right now. Huh? Basically, what it comes down to is not adult school, it's FAA because he's two and under. Okay, I got a solution. He can sit in her lap. Right. Okay. And, and, and then we can take off. And then we can put him back in the car seat. Yeah. That's what the FAA rules are. No, the with, bottom line with is. him being. No, they're not. Wait, we're pulling him up right now. With him being two, he cannot sit in the car seat. He needs. That's the purpose of making the non-seat. He has to stay here in your arms the whole time. So I, I'm just letting you know from this point on, this plane will not go anywhere. Do they have three seats, but he's not allowed to sit in his own seat because he's so young? No, you're allowed to. You just pay for it. You can, they can, at that age, you can either have them from on the flight as a lap infant and then they stay in your seat. So we did this. You. So you can do that and you don't pay for it. Correct. But so he, so. But you still like register them that they're coming as a yes. lap infant or whatever. So it sounds like he paid for the seat. But you but, can pay for your own seat if you want to put them in their car seat. Which sounds like what he did, but maybe since they're over capacity and there's this rule, like they're making, trying to make him put them in the lap. No, they cannot make I, that. Dude, no. I don't understand. No. You can hold this trucker. That's what I was. I'm just trying to help you. This is all I can do. I'm, I'm throwing it in my hands now. Hey, okay, trying to help. Uh, trying to help us would have been not overselling the fly and not trying to force us to to get him out of that seat that I paid for I and holding this whole plane up. It would have been a lot easier for you guys to just say. Okay, no. <laughs> not have that standby come right. down and and, and oh, yeah, okay no. so they pulled they did overbook the flight yeah, yeah no f delta then F yeah. Them. yeah absolutely not that yeah, I, right. I that first of all the guy was being calm and respectful he was handling that correctly he had every right to put up a fight yep 100 percent. no no i'd be living i'd be bullshit. yeah absolutely I'd put it's up really hard too. to stay calm in those situations yeah right? he did a good job of it and especially as it continues to go on and on and on and escalate and you're not moving and the planes and they're anywhere. and they were th were they threatening arrest over that uh, That's initially Absolutely not. No, you can't. I would, no, I would get wrecked. put my foot down. Like you have proof of the tickets. I paid for these seats. You overbooked the flight or accepted some sort of standby. Airlines are a disaster, dude. They're one of the most vital and necessary infrastructures in this country, but we're in a weird place with airlines right now. I don't know if you've seen all the stuff going on with Boeing or a lot of these people coming out where like over the last 20 years, how badly the quality control has been mm -mm. and how it's just like falling apart. And there's been whistleblowers that have just been 
winding up dead. Like literally the last two people that were gonna like testify against Boeing and how their lack of stringent manufacturing procedures has led to people dying. Like the, these people have just died randomly. I'm for the TV show. <laughs> I was in Like I'm not in a conspiracy theorist by any means, but there's some real weird going on. We know these things happen. Yeah, yeah. Flight canceled after waiting all day. That's fun. Oh. There is plenty of reason for me to be upset right now. You wasted my whole day. All of our days. You totally f***ed us all over all day. What the f***? What the f***? I'm sorry, is this your channel, Whiskey Sipping Dad? <laughs> it should be, yeah. Hello. Unacceptable. It's totally unethical for you to mess with us all day. 20 minutes here, 20 minutes there. Move to D7, move to E5, move to E4. It's bullshit. You never had a pilot the whole time. I'm sure you're a good person, but you work for a horrible, evil company. This guy's so mad. He's like trying his best to like not be mean to the people because he knows it's not their fault. But, but I don't, it's coming like, out. Dude, if you've been jerked around, sent to 13 different terminals, like you're delayed, delayed, and then all that just to be like, sorry, it's canceled. <laughs> I have sympathy with his freak oh, yeah. out here. Oh, yeah. you know? Not with, saying I would I mean, react with, in the same way. No, with the nature of it, it's not like I he's not it. he's not like flipping things over. He's not it. destroying property. He even said I'm he's just being mad. Person. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I'll show you a good person, <laughs> but you're f us. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what are you gonna do? I, you know, I just feel bad. It is the case where it's like, even when you are completely getting screwed over, it's like, what is the recourse? There's nothing you can do. They can do that, unfortunately. The only thing you can do is like, not fly that airline again or something. Yeah, it's like, you just taking another chance with another airline anyway. Airplane toilet leaks causing passengers oh, to cry. What is this, hell. dude? <laughs> no. No. This is the moment when passengers on board a Spirit Airlines flight Spirit. from Atlanta well, to New Spirit. York were left disgusted seeing liquid spilling out from a lavatory. You know that's piss and liquid, liquid too. Oh. Then streaming down the aisle, soaking the carpeting, was according to an airline spokesperson, clean, potable water. Oh, I bet it was. Sure. Yeah. I mean, could have been, but. No. <laughs> I like to think it was poopy water. Definitely poop, <laughs> definitely, diarrhea water. De definitely diarrhea water. That's what you get for flying spirit. It's it's a meme, but it's also real. Oh boy. What is that? <laughs> what is happening, dude? <laughs> What is that smell? Is that like fire smoke or okay, engine smoke? Do we have anything to Go tell down. us what's going on? Thank God it happened 10 minutes after the aircraft takeoff. Why have oxygen masks not dropped yet? Like, what the, is it though? The meme is like when you're on the same flight with Snoop Dogg. Clearly a mechanical error, something, Yikes. but that would be very terrifying. Allegedly it was soon after they took off, so you circle back around, but I mean. Yeah, 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 yeah. A spe I mean, that's not safe, dude. If that's like smoke from some sort of fire or any sort of like engine difficulties, that you don't- That's bad. The, those oxygen masks need to come down, like, dude. Get your laptops and even like flying stuff back. Bad. You got a hoodie on, take it off! Take it off! Moly. It's like a drill sergeant. That's what I said, yeah. One of the TSA agents, an ex-drill sergeant. Oh, is that what it said? Yeah, that was the caption. Oh, yep. Bro had the whole airport stress and yeah, for real. Oh man, you don't see it much like that anymore. I've never experienced anything like this on a flight before. As we were about to leave, the flight attendants announced that some passports have gone missing. They asked that everyone get up and look under their seats. This mom holding a baby said she put her bag on her seat and then went to the bathroom and came out and it was gone. They held the plane for over an hour searching for oh, these God. passports. Police became involved. It was this whole big thing. Unfortunately, no one found the passport, so this family had to get off the plane. I felt so bad for them. Come to find out in the middle of the night when they turned the lights off on the plane, somebody dropped them in the aisle by the bathroom. Can you believe that? Somebody actually stole these passports. What the hell? Oh, so there was a legit. Someone actually stole them. Then dropped them? It sounds like a weird story, but whatever. Yeah, it is all strange. The worst thing that ever happened to me on a plane was them forgetting or losing my luggage. Yeah, which happens all the time. I know. And it came, that was on our way to Vegas for a wedding. It was a very short trip. It was, two-nighter. And we were going to a wedding, so of course I'm absolutely freaking out that my luggage was still back in Boston and I had, you know, nothing. It ended up getting sort of delivered no makeup, that night. Yeah, no clothes, We had to go nothing. like straight to Bloomingdale's to buy you an outfit for the day and then. I got my makeup done. They eventually 
delivered it like that night at 11 p.m. or something? I the don't same know, day? Some, it was the nah, same. Nah, I don't know. I remember I was like looking for a toothbrush, so I don't think so. It was not. That fun. was fun. I know that but happens. All, that's the that first time that happens. Happened. I know. I'll take that over something dramatic happening in flight. Oh my god! Yeah, you can. Even though I was devastated. I'm luggage in the ocean over something happening on the plane. Are you kidding me? Ugh. I don't think I've ever traveled with anything more important than like a couple t-shirts and a pair of boxers that I like. <laughs> and then the second, Jackson crying the whole time when he was 18 months. Holy crap. Oh, we the we had the crying baby. No, we we really didn't. It wasn't that bad. It wasn't. No, no. you're right. He cried for a little bit of time. It felt terrible for it us because we closest, just wanted him to be like It was the closest I've ever been to baby. an anxiety attack. And it wasn't as much him crying as him just being restless the whole time. He like a little bit of iPad. There was maybe a 20 to 30 30 minute period where he's being a little cryy and I was freaking out. But then contrast to what we saw earlier in this yep. video to the guy crying and literally crying worse than the baby, deplaning the whole plane. There was a woman nearby that's yes. like, I have grandkids too. She gave Jackson a little lollipop. Yeah, she came over, she had a back of a tree. She's like, yeah. can you have a lollipop? And he and loved it. So we said, thank you like, so much. She's like, if you need help, just let me know. And Grant, like we had brought a bunch of stuff to try to keep him occupied, but we didn't have lollipops, whatever. And he liked it and it helped him pass fine for a little bit. And the plane ride was fine. Another happy landing. Nobody had a tantrum. Everyone was fine. I I mean, you almost had a mental I, I was, I don't want to be that parent. Yeah, you don't want to be the baby. one that's disturbing others. I don't want to be the guy that's like, I'm just doing everything I can to keep him pacified for however long this flight is. Thank God it was only like a three and a half hour flight. Yeah, yeah. In Florida so or whatever. Don't fly with an 18 month old if you can help it. This might be what a panic attack feels like. I could like feel it coming on yeah. just because I was in a plane and I was like, so maybe have sympathy for people that maybe do deal with that on planes in situations like that. Wrong response is freaking out and ruining it for everyone else yeah. every time. The whole trip, she placed my seat. We're no, you've seen it. Nobody did. Okay, no. She put, no. Put my seat back. I'm allowed to put my seat back. This is crazy because like everyone has had this battle before with like yeah. the seat back and the crushing your knees, but it very rarely gets to this point. So what did that comment say here? I don't put my seat back. It's too small on the plane for all that. You wind up hitting the person behind you. So that's very considerate. I don't ever put my seat back either. Or maybe I do. I, it depends on the plane. Yeah. Like, here's the deal. If someone in front of me puts their seat back, it hits my knees and it causes problems. I never say anything because it's part of the plane. It's just what you expect. People want to do what they're going to do. It. Extra I'm a big you. ass man. I'm a large ass man, though. I feel like for you, if it's longer than a little quick flight, then you need to pay for extra leg room. I would, yeah, if it's room. a long flight, I probably would. But even like, so I fly JetBlue most of the time because I've always had a pretty good experience with them, knock on wood. And just naturally, their planes are reasonably roomy. Okay. Like even their normal seats, I have a little bit of, I, like I don't have to, my knees aren't getting crushed. Their leg room seats are like huge. I could like yeah. lean back and stretch my legs out, but it's an extra hundred bucks. So unless I really need it or it's a long flight, like if I'm going to Florida, no, somewhere. If it's like anytime I've gone to California, sometimes I'll pay for it because that's like a six hour flight. More so though, I will say than the leg room is the seat. If I like- Oh, the shoulders. Because I have very broad shoulders. I cannot sit in the middle. He does have very broad shoulders. It is so uncomfortable. If I'm sitting in the middle, this arm and this arm will be on the left and right thigh of the people next to me. So I literally have to sit sideways like this. I have to sit like this for the entirety of the flight or I will be in the person's lap. So I always will get an aisle seat so that I can at the very least just kind of like hang off the side in the aisle. And then when the convenience cart comes by, I have to like do this for them. It just <laughs> blows. Being a big person on a plane is not fun. That's our tangent about flying. Yeah, there's my tangent about flying. But guess what? I've never once freaked out and caused anyone to deplane plane over it. I'm the type of person that's more worried about other people's comfort. That's one of those like, I'm not trying to pat myself on the back. It's, no, just, it's, how, like a people it's pleasing. just how I was raised. Yeah. My father and my mother come from similar type of mannerisms. It's weird. I'm telling you, like, I will honestly get uncomfortable, like watching uncomfortable situations on TV. Like if I see sure. something like a live, yes. like a live event and there's something very awkward, I'll change the channel because it's making me so uncomfortable because I can feel how uncomfortable people are. Sure. So imagine being on one of these flights where one of these situations is happening. Oh, You'd be like curling into a puddle. No, thank you. I want to get off. I want to get off. Oh boy. I mean, ma'am, you're in the middle of the, you're in the middle of the air. You can't, you can't get off. When you're taking these little puddle jumpers, like say so you fly somewhere on vacation and you're on a normal sized plane, but then you get on like one of these little like twin engine Cessnas in turbulence, it feels like you're in a tornado. I don't even really know from experience. I just know based on physics and from what I talk to people. So if you have a fear of flying or the feeling of turbulence, Stay on the Boeings, or not the Boeing, stay on the, the bigger planes because yeah, yeah, yeah. they're less affected by turbulence. These people.
I mean, listen, that's just someone who clearly is has a fear of flying anyways. Yes. John Madden, always the funniest case to me. One of the most popular football commentators of all time. Had a franchise, still has a franchise video game named after him. Traveled around the country for a living, never flew. Oh, I knew about that. Just took a bus yep. everywhere. Yep. Turbulence does suck though. I've been only once or twice in turbulence that was like eye-opening, where I was like, oh, I had my seatbelt on. But most of the time it's just like one of these. Yeah. And that is what it is. We're, the worst time was when I was coming home from Europe one time and I had had like seven beers and a layover. Oh, geez. And the turbulence made me feel very sick. You can take me, and you better shut them. What a rude dog. Oh, oh, what? Oh, this should be reported. You should be crushing people, and I can't even get my fucking it down. I am shut me again. You like fighting me just like running from me? See what happens. With this. Such a tough guy. There's nothing worse than a like a legit tough guy. It's the worst. Just everybody calm down. Shut your up, Calm down. Jump on me, you stupid. Wow. Do something. Do something to kill. Oh, look at the rat tail too. Did you see that Wait, rat tail? I know. Tail? Are you sure that wasn't from? Oh. Oh no, yeah. He's got a pony. He's got the ponytail. That guy just looks the part, dude. Like you'd like to think he could be like Holy a nice guy. Smoke. There's nothing worse than like trying to look super badass but being so insecure that you're such a like an uns insufferable. F like there's nothing more masculine and powerful than like not having to convince everyone you're tough. Sure. Right. That to me is the most emasculating thing ever. When you see someone like that, you're like, oh, you're just a weak little sad person that has to puff up his peacock feathers every time he's slightly threatened. It's like that's not masculinity. That's insecurity. Car wheels with him. No, you can walk away. You cannot come on this aircraft. You are shaking and I can see it. And because you guys are jeopardizing the safety of this aircraft right now. Okay. So I'm threatened by both of you. Right. Well, that's unfortunate. Let's, Let's go. The um, Sheriff's Department is on the way. Now you hear from me. Um, I told you. I didn't want this thing to get escalated, but you wanted to know. No, well, let's go no, ahead. We're gonna no, we're going to escalate it. I want a sobriety test. This is a sobriety test. I am sober. I work with children. I've been doing car wheels. I've been doing, wait, like you don't do those on a plane though. The flight attendant seems nice. These people, you mean the cartwheels I was doing with the children I met on the I was flight? Doing with the children that I met on the flight. As I was watching you drink your alcohol. Like I and said, I, I did have one glass of wine. Okay, so you're not sober, is what you're right. saying. Yeah. yeah. Because you've admitted it, I'm not going to allow you to come on this aircraft to get back to. Well, that's unfortunate. Damn. Put it down. is. It is. Because you should have been behaving yourself up in the, the, and you should have been behaving yourself here. You should have been listening to him. So that's. No, the, no, you made your decision before we walked up. Right, there. because her behavior. No, no, right. Right, because her behavior was that of somebody who appears to be intoxicated. I, I didn't realize that you were an expert. You're doing cartwheels in a plane, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay, let's so, go. I want, I want law enforcement to deal with both of them, yes, and please. I want that to be deleted immediately. You can't make that demand, but they... I, I can. I, I am not intoxicated. Your inability yes. to walk away is saying that you are. <laughs> it's the exact opposite, but... Oh my god. Yeah, I mean, I'm all for flight attendants erring on the side of caution before you lock the doors and to get into the air with someone who's possibly talking. Absolutely, rather so, like, than like end up in an absolute. That's what I mean. If you're on the fence like, about you, someone, that's gonna be a problem. Like you got like. Thanks for playing. That is what therapy for. Like they have to use their judgment. Yeah. Did I tell you this? That girl did sound hammered. She did. I'm not intoxicated. Did I tell you the story? I think, I don't know if I've told them that, but th that time I was flying ben. home Hi. from Texas. Yeah, you guys, how you doing? <laughs> the time I was flying home from Texas and I was, I started the day off drinking with donut operator Cody doing like man at 11 a.m. like vodka shots poured on our mimosas. So I get to the airport by like two o'clock. I'm feeling pretty ripe. I was just sitting at the bar across from my terminal and just missed my flight. You remember that, obviously. Obviously. Yeah. But we didn't get home until the next day. So the second part of that story that relates to this, I wasn't even that drunk. I'm just an absolute moron. He didn't have me 
to be like, hey, honey, it's time. Not to only that, but like, I didn't. I thought I would hear like, you know, like boarding, like flight boarding, whatever. I just didn't hear anything coming. Anyways, I met some dudes at the bar, two younger kids in their like college that were from Boston. We're from. They went to college here. They're from the city. So I end up sitting with them after I'm waiting another couple hours for my next plane. We're drinking beers, doing straws together. I'm a big guy. I'm a little tuned up, but I I carry myself. These guys are getting like a little too tuned up. Oh boy. Okay. Eventually, the next flight, we're getting on, we're boarding the plane. You know how it like it backs up like in the in yeah. the thing before you're on the plane. And one of the two dudes, he's like saying he awkward, couldn't, couldn't he's saying it. awkward shit to people on the line. He's like being like he's barely walking. So we finally get on the. He makes it on the plane for about seven seconds, and then he like the flight See attendants ya. were like, "Nope, you're way too drunk. You got absolutely booted off the plane." Yeah. So his friend was sitting there like, "Baby, babysitting him the whole time." Oh yeah, no, I was glad. I just thought it was funny because I was. Say? That would have been. Move to leave your drunk yeah, friend yeah, alone no, 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 by no. himself. I can't remember, but I just thought it was funny that I was drinking at the bar with them and they just couldn't hack it. Moral of the story is Leon needs his wife to help him make his way through. And the other moral is that, yes, these flight attendants should err on the side of caution. If you're going to be too drunk, you shouldn't be on a plane. You need to be the right amount of drunk to be on a plane. The other moral of the story is if you are going to freak out, try to do it in a place where there is an escape for people that don't want to be around <laughs> it. Also, babies cry. Get over it. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate your time. Okay, we'll see you in the next video. Thank you. Goodbye. Bye-bye.